the pain and suffering I've gone through to get this video for you guys. And will you be grateful? No, of course not. No, the intro's too long. Why is your seagull video not 27 minutes, 40 seconds? I do not understand. My name is Tall Biscuit of the Wild Podcast, Blue Please on CynicalBrit.com. This is my run through the Vortex Pinnacle. This is one of the Skywall instances. The other one is a raid. This one is designed for levels 81 to 84. This video consists of three attempts sort of smushed together to actually make it worthwhile because there was a bug in the beta right now where sometimes if you mouse over a mob, the game crit errors out. It kind of sucks just a little bit. We're going to start by utilizing a handy bug. If you actually queue for this while in the dungeon finder and on a flying mount, you can actually fly around a bit so you can have a look at the glorious scenery from the air. Otherwise, you cannot fly in this dungeon at all. It is not like the Oculus. They don't let you do that. Probably for the best, considering how it's designed. But wow, look at that architecture. Now, I checked out the towers on the outside in the olden video, but this is just so much more impressive to look at. Very cool indeed. And now, to the group that actually managed to get there without dying. The length of our run, bear in mind that I've sped it up to double the normal speed as usual, is approximately 50 minutes. I feel this could be done in 40 if it was done efficiently, and if we didn't have so much downtime because of the quality of the food available right now. We're scoffing down black jelly, which regenerates 48,000 health and mana over the course of one minute. There is no new food type yet, and it kinda sucks. So it takes ages for mages to get their mana back after a fight. Almost a minute, in fact. Now, kinda like the stone core, this has a lot of trash, and the bosses are maybe not as good as they should be yet. Bear in mind, of course, this is a beta, and I would hope that a lot of this would be changed. So, as always, this should be considered my dungeon feedback piece. The actual mobs themselves vary from kind of pointless up to this is pretty damn challenging. And you will see later there is a set of packs which really do require crowd control without a shadow of a doubt. If you're looking for a recommended group composition, pretty much anything that can AoE tank backed up by a warlock and or a shaman simply because you've got a lot of elementals in here and the cc really helps and yes shaman can now deal with elementals they can bind them so that is another class that can do that these guys here the armored mistrals don't really do an awful lot although bear in mind when a lot of these mobs explode though not in the case of the armored mistrals the gust soldiers and things like that they will actually fire you backwards in a big gust of wind this is not a good thing because you get thrown off the side of the instance now you think oh well total biscuit that's not too bad <laughs> you think so in the beta right now if you die in this instance and you release spirit you end up in dalaran Yes, it's exciting stuff, so enjoy your spirit resing. This is hard mode here, ladies and gents. If you die, that, well, it's not it per se, but someone is going to have to spirit res, and that's 10 minutes of downtime that you really didn't want. Now, more people will be asking, Total Biscuit, are add-ons in the beta now? Yes, they are, but I'm not actually using them. That aura that you saw around my character there is the Blizzard version of Power Auras. And it's quite nice. I've never actually used Power Auras before. I used a couple of different things like Mage Alert, stuff like that. But Power Auras is very nice, makes it very obvious when you can use your Hot Streak. And as far as I'm aware, every spell has a unique, cool Power Aura. Now, these mobs right here are fairly interesting. They're called Lurking Tempest. And they are the most cowardly mobs in World of Warcraft. When you hit them once, they will feign death and they will sit there, regenerating 5 health per second. They are nigh on impossible to DPS down. We did it once, it took ages, and we had to burn all our cooldowns. All you need to do is just leave them alone. Poke them once, leave them alone, and if they pop up, and they will often do so if, say, you are behind them and you can't see them, then you just poke them again and they'll fall over. Once you get far enough past them and when they pop back up, they do not actually aggro you, so you don't have to worry about them chasing you around. Although they do seem to have this pulsing in and out of combat thing, which prevents you from eating for more than two seconds, which is incredibly annoying. So yeah, do watch out for that. Wild Vortex and things like that, they're pretty much generic trash. Lots of AoE can be had, and we actually have two Fire Mages in our group today. If you haven't already noticed, fire mages are more than anything now about blowing tons of stuff up. 
They are an amazing area of effect class now, way more so than they used to be. Flame Strike is actually good. Blast Wave now has a range, and also if you hit multiple targets with it, will also cast a Flame Strike. It's also worth keeping the Living Bomb on as many targets as possible, because if you've got three or more targets being affected by fire damage over time, you trigger that little buff that you saw right there, Pyromaniac, and it's 10% haste. It's incredible, <laughs> without a shadow of a doubt. It's so much fun as well. You literally just start throwing out as much fire as possible, explosions, big booms, and stuff like that. Although, I must say I'm having some issues with mana right now. Now, I do have a shaman here, and they will occasionally drop down the mana stream totem and things like that. But it's still a bit problematic in a group format like this. I burn through mana very fast. Flame Strike and Living Bomb are quite expensive. Blast Wave, not so much, but it's stuck on a cooldown, so it's not all that helpful. Right, now these guys go by the name of Cloud Princes, and they will spawn a lot of little dudes, which means more AoE. Now, we are overgearing this instance just a little bit. The tank is level 85, although he's mostly still in ICC 25 man gear. The level 85 will, of course, help just a little bit against these 82 and 83 mobs. Area of effect tanking is very nice here. We actually tried this with a warrior, and as many warriors will tell you right now, warriors are in a bad state in the beta right now. They desperately need fixing, and their area of effect tanking really is not doing them much service in instances like this. Now you might say, oh, well, it's a lot of AoE packs. It's not all that entertaining, and actually, you're kind of right, honestly. Some of these packs are not all that interesting. It's mostly just a case of aggro control. When we did it with the warrior tank, we had major aggro issues, particularly on AoE packs. When we do it with this death knight, we have no problems at all. Aggro control is something that is very good indeed to see back in the game, and you will see some crowd control later, and it is necessary. It's not just a, hey, this would be nice. It's a, oh god, this really, really matters later on this instance, so that's good, but... As much as I really love the aesthetic of this instance, I feel there's still quite a little bit more to be done. Bear in mind, of course, this is beta, and this is also only the normal mode. Heroic is not available yet, so I don't know if they're going to have any major changes there. Maybe they will, maybe they won't, but we're also using level-appropriate gear, and I would expect this to be at least a challenge, like, say, the Throne of Tides and the Blackrock Caverns were. Stone Core, the trash was quite challenging, but in here, the early trash at least really is AoE, AoE, and AoE again. Thankfully, it does get a little bit more entertaining as we go on. Two Cloud Princes is always interesting, but then again, I suppose you can consider that we do have a crazy amount of AoE here. I mean, we have two Fire Mages, which is pretty much the best selection of AoE you could possibly have at this point in time. I think the only one that would match up to that is maybe a mage and a warlock but otherwise our aoe is absurd it's ridiculous it's got a big range we can cast an awful lot of it and some of it's even got damage over time okay first boss right here it does have a placeholder model so this will be replaced now all he really does is he will spawn a storm shield which will spin around the outside of this ring arena here if you get in it, you'll be slowed and you will have loads of damage done to you. He will also recall the Storm Shield, which will bring it in close to you in that sort of Phase 2. And it'll go between Phase 1 and Phase 2, recalling it and then sending it out again. Now, as far as I can tell, it seems like you're supposed to run out of it when he brings those Cyclones in. However, we didn't do that. We just simply used Chain Heal to stay in there. And we tried in the earlier run to actually run away from this and it doesn't do anything. You, you can't get away from the lightning. You take massive lightning damage and you end up dying. You do get your casting and your attack speed slowed a bit when he brings that in. But as long as you've got a good shaman or otherwise AoE healer, you shouldn't honestly have any problems with this boss. I would think that this boss does need to be tuned a little bit more. And kind of similar to the stone core, I feel that this is only half a boss. Like, okay, so you've got the spinning cyclone mechanic and that is it. No chain lightning... No movement of any description, simply a tank and spank and stand in the middle. Again, that's a cool mechanic, but where's the rest of it? That's my question. It's not good to see that some of these later instance bosses actually have less abilities than the stuff in Blackrock Caverns, etc. And I would urge Blizzard to get that sorted out. Now, we appear to only be four. Yes, our tank jumped to his death, not realizing he had to click on the thing. <laughs> oh, man. Oh dear. So there is no way for us to get him. He's going to have to spirit resin Dalaran and pour back in. So we're going to have to four man this for 10 minutes while he gets himself sorted out. 
Oh, man. Yes, click the slipstream. Honest, you really don't want to just be jumping off the cliff. Grats. Loot. Okay, let's talk about these next packs while we're on here. They really don't do anything interesting. They're just AoE packs. Again, that's the problem. I mean, half of this instance is actually pretty cool. The later packs are awesome. And there's some cool mechanics in there as well. But these, th these are uninspired, honestly. Which is a shame because the design of the instance, the actual aesthetic, that's really inspired. It's freaking awesome. I mean, look at this. Just look at how cool it is. It's amazing looking. Perhaps one of the best looking instances I've ever seen. I mean, it's thrown a tides level in terms of just how awesome and beautiful it is. But in terms of the mobs and the bosses, no. It's not there yet. It's like they did Throne of Tides way earlier and they actually got it properly balanced and fixed and put enough flavor in there to make it worthwhile. Here, not so much. Here it's just like, hey, AoE. Now, these guys do this big lightning cloud thing. As long as you've got a competent healer, this should be of no issue to you at all. Some of the stuff will hit fairly hard, but again, as long as you've got a good healer, you're sorted. Right, let's clear these out of the way. Now, you don't have to clear both packs, thankfully. And we're just waiting for our tank to get back here. He'll catch up to us eventually, and our DPS warrior has respected to prot, so we shouldn't have too much of an issue here. Having a bit of a sightsee, honestly. I, I just love the Arabian-style architecture that's going on here. It's awesome. It's not something that you see an awful lot in WoW, and it's nice to get a look at something that's different, honestly. Okay, now these assassins are not all that assassin-like. They've got this stacking poison debuff, and that really is about it. So feel free to poison cleanse that. Sounds like a fairly good idea to me. Otherwise, they're not all that threatening, honestly. I believe there is a pull whereby you have to fight these and other stuff, and that's where they get a little bit dangerous, but on their own, these pulls are not challenging at all. A lot of you might be thinking to yourself, well, why should normal be challenging? Well, because you're going to have to run it a couple of times at least, and I would prefer that my instances were actually challenging all the way up as opposed to just challenging at the end game. Otherwise, y you don't end up training people that way. People go into a game and they get up to level 85 and they're not really prepared for what's there and they wipe and they cry for nerfs and Blizzard retunes because people aren't getting to, quote, see the content. Now, these guys are a little bit annoying. They've got this nasty breath attack, and more to the point, they have a massive AoE healing rain, which can actually override your DPS. We're actually DPSing now with what is effectively a four-man group because our Death Knight can't do anything with res sickness. So we're trying to overwhelm him here, and it's a little bit difficult. It does wear off eventually, though, so it's not that bad. You could just sit there if you so desire, or you can try and out-DPS his healing ability. As far as I'm aware, he only does it once, so it's not all that threatening. And those are one of the new Storm Drake models. There are a number of different Drakes. That one looks particularly smug, as you can see in its little portrait there, but not so much anymore. Now, these are intriguing. What these do is absolutely nothing. <laughs> Seriously. The mobs with 3.2 million health. All you need to do is just wait for them to stop spinning. I don't think you even have to do damage to make that happen. They stop spinning, and you walk through them. Done. <laughs> no problem whatsoever. Now, if you had to do that, and maybe they turn themselves on and off, kind of like the Frogger boss, and throw you off the side of the instance, that would be entertaining. As it stands, they are a mere knee-high hurdle, if that. So are these assassins, honestly. But it's still fun to do damage in DPS. You'll note, finally, that I've got my scrolling combat text back. That was fixed with the latest build. And you'll see that my damage doesn't look all that impressive. Well, that's because crit has been nerfed hard. I've got, like, 17% crit right now. It's not even funny. The way that it scales in Cataclysm, it's like, yeah, you had all that crit? Not anymore. It's totally wiped out. It's done it in previous expansions, but it's way more extreme this time around. They really don't want you having crazy amounts of crit. That also means that Hot Streak is not as effective as it could be, but there are ways and means around that. Say if you use Scorch, which has a much higher crit chance, then you are more likely to get the crits there, and you can also use Combustion to increase your chances of getting crits. But when you do get them, it is very nice indeed. You can actually apply a debuff now. You remember that Scorch debuff, the 5% crit? Well, you can now get it from a Pyroblast as well. So if you get enough Hot Streaks, you never have to reapply Scorch. It's kind of neat. As I sit here eating the black jelly from a tankard, of course. Why 
why can they not just once please make it look like I'm not drinking bread? <laughs> We've had this bug for years now, whereby if you get health and mana back, it shows that you're drinking bread from a tank card, which is particularly metal, but somewhat impractical and inaccurate. Not a fan. It would be nice, actually, if you had a different model for each different food you were eating. I know it's a little bit RP, but seriously. Now, you might notice that my mirror images are now casting fireballs. This is a minor glyph that allows them to cast fireball or arcane blast, depending on your spec. I think it's entirely cosmetic, as far as I can tell. I don't see any real benefit to it, and I would really have to do some tests with and without the glyph to see whether or not you gain any extra damage from that whatsoever. If you do, it's probably the most powerful minor glyph in the entire game, which is why I'm thinking it's not the case, since all of the other minor glyphs are either convenience or cosmetic upgrades. Whatever, it's kind of cool to have lots of fire firing all over the place, why wouldn't it? You don't want to be a fire mage and have frost bolts flying, it looks ridiculous. You gotta represent. Now, these are the packs I was talking about. These are a little bit more difficult because you get an Imperian Assassin too, in fact, and a bunch of those turbulent squall, squall, squirrel things. They're a little bit tougher on the tank. I would imagine that a appropriate level tank might struggle with the stacking poison, and that would need to be cleansed. Otherwise, for a tank of that level, it's not really a big deal. There we go. We're coming up on the second boss of this three-boss instance right here. We'll have a little bit of a look over the side, because that's all I really want to do in this instance, is just look at everything. It's like, wow, look at the design of this place. It's just a shame that the actual encounters right now in beta don't really match up to its excellence and the grandiose nature of the whole affair. Second boss, slightly bigger Storm Drake. This is probably the most entertaining, although, again, it's not all that challenging. She's got two major abilities you need to worry about. The first one is a chilly breath, which makes you a little bit nippy and also hits you about 28k. Not all that pleasant. And the cool gimmick of this fight is something called wind direction, whereby you can either be upwind or downwind of this thing. If you are downwind, you actually gain a buff. If you're upwind, you get a debuff, as you saw there. So you saw it change right there. I've moved behind her, and I get a massive increase in movement speed and casting speed. However, generally speaking, if you're upwind, you're also going to be hit by that breath. That doesn't mean you should be too worried, because our healer was more than capable of dealing with it. I have a feeling on heroic mode, that might be something of a bigger deal. But right now... It's just a case of, hey, this is a fun fight where we get to cast a fireball every 1.2 seconds or so and nuke this one down. If you don't use that, the fight will take ages. But again, these bosses seem to be incomplete. It's very possible that they are. Stuff is ready for testing, but Blizzard has not necessarily said that this is the final version. So it's like, okay, where are the rest of the mechanics? What else can we throw in there to make it a little bit more entertaining? There's a couple of things they could do, really. I can think of all manner of different mechanics they could just throw into the mix to make it dangerous. A couple of void zones every now and again actually make you move out of something. Don't just stand in the breath. Maybe have a stacking debuff if you continue to stand in the breath. Maybe have a stacking debuff if you continue to stand in the wind. Maybe there's some kind of chill debuff that makes you more vulnerable to frost. And if you stay in there too long, when you get hit by the breath, you will die. Something like that, maybe. Just a thought. Oh, are we ready for some entertaining packs? Uh, we should be. These are probably the best packs in here by a very significant margin. As you can see, I'm breaking out the big guns, ladies and gents. I'm getting the polymorph out. And yes, it is on F12. Thank you, G11 keyboard with Razor Naga. Now, these dudes right here, the Temple Adepts, they are an absolute nightmare of a healer. They are really dangerous. They hit hard. And they have this greater heal. And you think, oh, well, that's easily interrupted, right? Not necessarily, because when they get below a certain amount of health, they get a desperation buff, which increases their casting speed, basically doubles the speed at which they can cast. Those greater heals are extremely effective. They can get a bunch of health back, and they can cast them over and over and over again with no mana problems whatsoever. Now, this pack isn't all that dangerous, because there's only one of them. The later packs have two. So you're looking for either crowd control or some very major interrupts. If you do not crowd control the healers, I don't think there is any way you can actually kill these packs. They would heal far too fast. That's kind of neat, isn't it? The 
fact that you have to use those abilities you used to have to use back in level 60 content. Crowd control, unbelievable. Hell, I remember using it back in TBC as well. They hadn't quite forgotten about it then. And then, of course, they got rid of it. Now, since almost every class has some form of crowd control, I don't really see you having any problems at all with having some real crowd control in here. So, you know, those wines really don't apply. This is kind of neat. You get a little Zephyr that follows you up there. If you get in the Zephyr, you get a 70% speed increase. So it doesn't take quite as long to get, to get to the top here. And here's another neat mechanic. Those lightning pyramid things are a giant grounding field. So anything that's in there becomes immune to magic. Now, potentially, you could stand in there as well. And you could have the guy tank outside, and that would make you immune to some magic. But it's still it's a bit of a pain in the ass, one way or the other. You've got to be careful where you pull. As you see here, we're going to pull these mobs, and the temple adepts are going to stand in there. They're going to start casting. Can I polymorph them? No, I cannot. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring them out, and then we can sort out the polymorphs, except it's standing on the death and decay. Ah, it's been so long, so very, very long since I actually used a polymorph. Feels good, man. As long as you crown control both temple adepts, these groups are not all that hard. There's a lightning lash which does a little bit of damage in an area of effect kind of scenario, but otherwise just group them up and AoE them down once again. A little bit disappointing really. It's a hard thing to judge. I mean, what you've got here is a pack that we, we wanted crowd control back, right? Did, didn't everyone want that back? Because I wanted it back. But if we use crowd control... Then what happens is we get a pack that really is not very dangerous at all. It doesn't even have to be single target DPS, then can just be AoE down. I have a feeling these packs need to be balanced in a better manner, honestly. Yeah, I like the fact that we've got the crowd control. That's cool. The fact that we have to crowd control two healers, or at least crowd control one and interrupt the other. That's great. But the problem is without the healers, these packs have no bite. They are reliant entirely on that one single mob. And if you neutralize that mob, the entire pack is ineffective. Reminds me of the lava packs back in Molten Core. Those things were actually dangerous, even if you took one of the guys out. I like packs to be dangerous across the board. Have really nasty abilities all over the place. These are just irritating, honestly. They just float around. They don't really aggro on anything. And they randomly shoot bolts of whatever it is you just throw aoe on them and do single target damage they're a waste of time in heroic mode i'd imagine they probably do a ton of damage to you but hey there's no real way to judge that again if you're going to use stuff like this i would really like to see them combo with other mobs it's like this pack is impotent you're not going to die to this how could you your healer would have to be asleep just a little bit of group healing would actually keep you up against these things they don't really do all that much damage, and they just spin around doing nothing. Combo them with another pack, however, and then you might have a dangerous combination. That's something that I would like to see, certainly in the heroic mode, and even a little bit in normal, just to spice things up a bit. Now, since we've got quite a few more pulls to go, let me tell you about the nonsense that was actually required for me to get in here to begin with. So, the instance portal right now in the beta is broken. So, the only way to get into the Vortex Pinnacle is to use LFG. So I listed myself in the LFG and I found that the instance was locked and I was like, well, why is that? Because apparently I had item level 268 on average, I needed 272. Now I did my maths and I was actually above 268. The maths in the beta is currently wrong right now. So I went into Deep Home and decided I'll go get a quest item and replace one of those ICC 25 man items. So I do, I managed to get some shoulders, about item level 300 or so. I put them on and lo and behold, item level 271. At which point I rage, scream, possibly throw my monitor across the room, which is maybe why it doesn't work so well anymore. And then went back into Deep Home to get more greens. But from what I found here, we really did not need that item level at all. It's way, way too conservative in terms of what they think you need. And more to the point, why exactly as a fully prearranged guild group do I have to have an item level requirement? The guild has already made that decision for me. It's just silly. Now... This is mostly because of the fact that the uh, gate isn't open, but the thing is, a lot of guilds do use LFG. Why wouldn't they? It's beneficial, it's quicker, and you get extra badges and stuff like that. Why would you not use the system that's been put in there for you? I don't really get that. Putting this mandatory item level restriction in there just stops guildies from leveling up alts and actually helping out newer players, which is totally counterproductive. That and the fact that guildies should be able to choose exactly who they bring to their dungeon runs and not have to worry about what some mandatory system says. And it's like, computer says no. Yeah, we get the idea. Okay. 
seriously, I don't know why that's in there, and it does need to go. It certainly shouldn't be there in the beta, because people can't even test properly as a result of it. So yeah, Blizzard, please get rid of that item level thing. Just just get rid of it. If you're going to have it, have it on random groups only and not pre-arranged. I totally get that you need it on a random group just to stop scrubs from getting in there that might ruin the experience of other players. But this is a pre-arranged guild group and everyone in here is from the same guild. <laughs> this decision has already been made. They already want to group with each other. The game doesn't get to make that call as far as I'm concerned. Now, we're coming up on the final boss. This is actually a new model, thankfully. Again, most of this stuff is placeholder. They haven't got all of it in yet. There is no loot, as you have seen, which is rather disappointing. I would like some nice fat epics, but we're just going to have to deal with what we've got. Now, again, once more, we've got the same problem with this boss. It feels like half a boss. It's got some neat mechanics in it, but they don't go far enough to make a challenging fight. So what can he do? Well, his main ability is he will create a one of those triangle-style grounding fields, and you have to get in there before he does this big supremacy of the storm thing, which will kill you. I, at least I think it will kill you. I certainly hope it will kill you. I never stood out in it long enough to work it out, but I assume it must. Otherwise, hey, what's the point in it? Aside from that, he'll also do a chain lightning, which does sting quite a bit. And as far as I can tell, from when I was looking at it, the chain lightning, you might actually have to eat it on multiple targets because I think it does more damage if it only hits a single target. Very unpleasant indeed. Now, why exactly would he create a grounding field f then to go and do that? Like, what's the grounding field for? I, it's weird, honestly. It's one of those self-defeating boss mechanics. Ah, Mr. Biscuit, I see you've fallen into my well-prepared trap. Allow me to tell you my plans for world domination so you may easily thwart them at the last minute. Same problem here, really. It's a grounding field, guys. Go stand in the grounding field. Oh, look, it's Supremacy of the Storm that would otherwise kill you. Meh. So? <laughs> Again, half a boss. So I'm hoping that Blizzard will be taking all of this feedback. I'm not the only person giving feedback like this, needless to say. There's feedback on the forums, feedback submitted through the game, and feedback submitted via videos and podcasts. If Blizzard is paying attention to its beta testers, it will realize that stuff like this in the Vortex Pinnacle and the Stone Core really doesn't do the instance justice. And we've got some great trash in places. Some of it's kind of garbage and needs to be tuned up. But some of it's really cool. And we've also got some really great areas. I mean, the aesthetic of this and the Stone Core... Th this has the best looking dungeons ever, <laughs> without a shadow of a doubt. Black Rock Caverns isn't all that good, but Throne of Tide, Stone Court, and Vortex Pinnacle, they all look great. So why can't we have bosses to match that greatness? Why do the bosses have to let the instances down? That's what I have to ask you. So yeah, down he goes. No loot for us, of course. And my conclusion is just that, really. Looks great. Bosses need more mechanics. They've got some great starting mechanics, but they are incomplete. They do need work, and I would not necessarily judge this as the final product because it clearly isn't. My name's been Total Biscuit, and this has been a look at the Vortex Pinnacle, a dungeon that you can check out in Uldum. I'll see you next time.